to uh, discussion board post number two for the second time. Hopefully this one works really well for you. So again, the species that I chose was the Australopithecus afarensis. And again, I chose this species because I really like the way that the name sounded. So um, the name is definitely Latin. Australopithecus stands for southern ape, and then afarensis means from afar. And Afar was a tribe that was living in this part of East Africa where the fossils had been found. Um, they were centralized Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, and they were first discovered in 1974 by Donald Johnson. Just a few years later, um, there was a giant discovery all over the, in that area. The, um, the most famous of this species would be Lucy, which is why the Afarensis species has been nicknamed the Lucy species. We saw lots of pictures of her in our textbook back when we did chapter 10. So what was found through looking at all of these species, or all of these fossils, excuse me, is that there was a pretty big um, sexual dimorphism between the women and the children. So the men stood just under five feet, weighing in about 90 pounds, and the women were quite a bit shorter, only three and a half feet, um, averaging about 64 pounds. Another famous um, fossil of the Afarensis species would be Dakika, um, and that would be the child. And one of the beneficial things about this um, wave of fossils that were found is that scientists were able to deduce that um, the afarensis species started living more in groups because of the way that the fossils were kind of found together. Um, back then, with all of the tests that we have now, actually, um, like CT tests, for example, we're still able to scan their bones and see that their brain size were only about 430 cc's, which is about a third of what our brain sizes are right now. So, weren't very big, but they were definitely a lot bigger than they had been back at that point. Um, one of the beneficial things is that in Latoli, there was quite a bit of volcanic activity in this time period. And again, we're looking at 3.85 to 2.95 million years ago. So, you know, just a small snippet of time in the past. But those, um, the volcanic ash was able to really well preserve the footprints for the Afarensis species as well as some other things that happened to traverse the land there. And what we found through looking at the footprints is that the heels were rounded. The Afarensis also had two arches. So one went from front to back and the other one went from left to right. Also, and this is one of the biggest changes, is instead of the toe being opposable, it's now parallel and attached to the rest of the foot. This, plus the um, fact that the pelvis has now been um, tilted, shows that the Afarensis species were bipedal. So they weren't necessarily standing up straight like you and I do today, but they weren't, you know, dragging their muscles on the ground or crawling. They also weren't living in the trees, such as the apes. Now, a characteristic that they have that is reminiscent of the apes is still going to be in their fingers. So, like gorillas, but not necessarily as much, um, their fingers are actually curved, and this would have allowed them to hold on to trees while possibly walking in the treetops, not necessarily climbing and swinging and holding on that way. So, you know, it depends really on what the landscape was back then as to how much they used the trees, but it was something that they were still adapted to be in. So up in the trees or down on the ground, combination of both. Also, what was found is that the teeth had been changing. So they were a lot smaller than the ape ancestors. Um, also, they were parabolic instead of parallel. And this is definitely more a human-like trait. The premolars are going to be even on both sides. And the teeth actually speak to the type of food that they would eat back then. So not necessarily shredding the grass and the leaves to get all the nutrients, but very possibly also grinding up nuts and potentially even eating some meat some other animals. I think I was able to cover everything um, that it, I needed to. I don't necessarily have all of my notes. Um, but the last thing that I found that was extremely interesting, just kind of in the correlation between 
Actually, I guess there would be two things. So one is that the baby teeth would erupt in a similar pattern to chimpanzees. And so this speaks to what the um, life cycle, so how the species would mature. Um, they matured on a similar scale to what we do now, not necessarily as quickly because they're, or as slowly because their lifespans were a lot shorter than what we have going on. Um, but the second part is that in the vertebrae, there's the AL288-1. It's a lot smaller compared to the rest of the bones in the area. When tested, it was found to be very afferensis, DNA filled, but it's also a piece that's found very commonly in the Gibata baboon. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. So all of this definitely shows that the afferensis wasn't necessarily ape, but it also wasn't necessarily human as we see right now. This is why the Lucy species is definitely called the missing link, because we're able to learn a lot. And if these fossils were found less than 50 years ago, with the way that technology has been growing, it's going to be pretty amazing to see what we're able to deduce in another 50 years and learn about our ancestors and how we were able to become who we are today. I hope I included everything, and I hope you have a wonderful holiday. Thank you.